Now to Sports World, Hall of Fame basketball coach Phil Jackson says he hasn't watched an NBA game since the 2020 season in Florida, played amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Why? Well, the 11-time NBA champion coach apparently grew disenchanted with the NBA's foray into politics. After suspending the season for COVID in 2020, the NBA season later resumed in the wake of the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and the nationwide protests. The words Black Lives Matter were painted on the court. The league also reached an agreement with the Players Union to allow social justice messages like I can't breathe, justice, equality, say her name on jerseys. And that rubbed Phil Jackson the wrong way. They had things on their back like, you know, justice. And uh, yeah, I made a little funny thing like... Uh, you know, Justice just went to the basket and uh, equal opportunity just knocked him down. So my grandkids thought that was pretty funny to, to, to play up those names. So I, I, I couldn't watch that. They even had slogans on the floor, on the baseline. It was catering. It was trying to cater to an audience or trying to bring a certain audience into play. And it they didn't know it was turning other people off, you know? Mm -hmm. People people want to see sports as non-political. Back with Mercedes Colwin, trial attorney, Dr. Lauren Wright, conservative political analyst, and John Fugelsang, comedian and Sirius XM host on the Progress Channel. Um, Lauren, what do you make of Phil Jackson's comments? I mean, I do think that's how a lot of people feel. Polling consistently has shown that, even about the NFL with the kneeling issue. But players make these statements, that's their choice. And I think, frankly, a lot of them, these are important issues to them and they don't care about the loss in market share. They don't care about the audience size. They've made that calculation and decide to do it anyway. So I don't know how anyone could check on that or reserve it. Maybe that's a, yeah. a question for a lawyer. I love that. No, I really <laughs> love what he said yeah. because it's true. They have this enormous platform. They want to use it. And frankly, there are lots of laws around the country that talk about these outside activities and your beliefs in terms of conditions of employment. Those are things that you can discuss yeah, and you it's, are protected But it's from. a different issue that you want to go and make comments, et cetera, than the league deciding to put these big things emblazoned on the court, et cetera. Um, you know, that does make basketball feel more political. I think that if it keeps happening again and again and again, um, and look, there will be another incident, right? There will be another, you know, th yes. these, these social justice movements will happen every sure. five years or whatever it is where there'll be some incident, and as a result, there'll be a response. And at some point, depending on what the incident is, depending on how controversial it is, there could be uh, backlash. The NFL did see backlash for a while, did see lower, sure. ra uh, yep. uh, lower ratings, sure. et cetera. Sure. I love Phil Jackson. He's a legend. Nothing can take away what he's given us. Um, we all have to decide, am I more offended by racism and police brutality, or am I more offended by protests against racism and right. police brutality? Right. Am I more offended yeah. by Colin Kaepernick's knee or Derek Chauvin's knee. Phil Jackson is a man of incredible wealth and privilege. He has that wealth and privilege because of black male bodies. He's free to not care about abuse of black male bodies, but it's black men who made his reputation and made him famous. And if he doesn't like black men who are millionaire athletes, who still have empathy to care about a black man who's murdered by cops, then that's on his conscience, it's on his soul, and it's on his reputation. The, the, he lost some fans today, he'll never get back. The problem is that when you refer to it broadly as police brutality, right, that's the problem, right? The problem George was... George Floyd, we can call police brutality. Yes, you can. Yeah. But I'm saying broadly, meaning yeah. beyond George Floyd. What happened as a result of that, what happened as a result of the movement was defund the police. What happened as a result of the movement was police officers leaving the departments around the country because they were being mistreated and they were well, being not respected. Defund the police never happened. That was a few far left oh. activists shooting their mouths off. Well, Any cops who want to leave because people don't like police brutality are free to find well, you know the what? door. But see, you know what? Shame on you. It, Shame because, on me. Yes, okay. I mean that. Because I, I think that that it, it really doesn't show enough empathy. It's a word you use, and I respect that. Yeah. Um, for the police officers. I These think officers police brutality have to hurts deal. good cops. It does. It absolutely does. But to say that any cop who doesn't like 
the idea of police brutality can go ahead and leave. Cops don't like police no, brutality. No, I don't mean that at all. I mean, any cop who doesn't like the idea of protesting or any cop who would leave because some people are protesting, but, it is wrong to judge all cops based on the behavior yes, from some racist exactly. and thugs like Derek Chauvin, Correct. no doubt. But Phil Jackson complained about the words, Black Lives Matter. You know, if you don't like Black Lives Matter, ask yourself, why do we need a Black Lives Matter movement? Why has this movement arisen? Well, they're, they're angry about the symptom of the problem and not the problem that's driving the protests. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.